video is going to be a new series of videos that I'm creating for all of you girls that recently got engaged and are in the middle of planning a wedding. So I'm gonna be calling this series Future Brides, so stay tuned to any videos that may be labeled that way because that's why I'll be giving you guys all my tips and tricks and just everything that I've learned on what it takes to plan a wedding because no one's an expert unless you're a wedding planner on planning a wedding. I mean, it's your first time doing it. Planning a wedding is very expensive and it's pretty hard and can be really confusing. So I just wanna sit down and give you guys some of my personal tricks and some of my tips on what I've been doing so far with my wedding planning. So if you wanna hear some of my tips, keep watching. So just a little background information. Um, I'm getting married October 11th of this year. So we're like about eight months out. Yeah, we're like about eight months out now. So I have like a timeline that I've been following to make sure that I've booked everything that I need to and you know that I'm just on the right track to getting everything done on time okay, guys, for so the wedding. I'm a neat freak. Anybody that knows me knows that I need everything in its place at all times. So in order to keep myself organized and be able to find everything, I have a little binder that has pretty much all of my wedding stuff. All Everything is in this binder. So my first tip would be to get organized because there's a lot that goes down with planning a wedding. Probably things that you can't even think about just yet, you know? There's a lot of different steps that you're gonna need and a lot of paperwork that you're gonna fill, end up filling out as far as like the venues and the flowers and the cake and just everything like that. So stay organized, keep everything in one place so that um, you'll be able to know where you're at as far as the timeline goes and what you still need to do. So tip number one, get organized. I have up here in the corner, I have a little calendar right inside of my wedding planning binder so that I could just write down things that are very specific to the wedding. So I have February up here. Um, I have to talk to my florist. I had to have my wedding dress picked out by February. And everything I guess like tip that, number so. two would be to get educated as far as what you need to do to plan a wedding. Um, you don't have to go out and buy a book or anything like that. I mean, but there are tons and tons of books out there that are very helpful. There's even like, um, you can even go to Barnes and Noble and get yourself a binder that's pre-made with tabs and everything that you need to do, like step by step, how much you need to spend on this and how much you need to spend on that. Honestly though, those are very, very pricey. Like I've seen some for upwards of $60 and you know, I made my own and all I did was ended up buying it's by this the book knot, right here. Which is another uh, tip that I have for you guys is this website, The Knot, but we'll talk about that later. Anyways, this book is called um, Book of Wedding Lists. So it pretty much gives you a list of everything, it even breaks down wedding, um, your budget, like what percentage of everything in your budget goes to what particular thing. For example, it gives you the reception, the ceremony, stationery, flowers, photography, and it gives you a set percentage of what you should be spending on each category. I go by the percentages that the book gives you. I stayed pretty close to them, but there were things to me that took more priority, so I gave it a bigger percentage of my budget. Next, I wanna go over the breakdown of my timeline. So I have mine labeled with different colored tabs, and then every tab represents a different, um, different group of months of what needs to be done within that time frame, like 12 to nine months out, nine to six months out, six to four months out, and then four to two months out, and last but not least, one month to seven days out. And every tab pretty much goes over in detail what needs to be done in that time frame. So on 12 to nine months out, you should have established your budget and broken down the percentage of what you're gonna be spending on everything. You should have your guest list, you should have your venue, you should have your colors and your theme, you should have your bridal party picked out, and you should have your save the date cards sent out. Save the dates I did the around like tabs, nine you're months. You wanna have your entertainment booked, like your DJ, whether you're getting a band, if you want a photo booth, any type of entertainment you're gonna have at your venue, you wanna have that booked nine to six months out. Um, you're gonna wanna have your florist, your photographer, your cake, and at six months, you wanna send out your invitations and the RSVP cards. You want to get these RSVP cards back because to me, that's like the most important thing. Um, I don't know how every single venue works, but every single one that I checked, 
um, they charge you by plate. So if you have a guest list of 120 people, but only 70 people out of your guests show, which is a common thing, like only like 75% of your guests will actually show up to your wedding. Um, which is why it's so important to have that RSVP because um, my venue in particular, they want a final headcount. I think it's 10 days before the wedding. Five, six months prior to the wedding is more than enough time for them to figure out if they're going to be coming or not and how many people they're going to be in their particular party. So you'll have your guest list count. Does that make sense? You'll have the count of your guests in time to give your venue a more accurate amount of um, people that are coming. Therefore, that will bring the cost of your venue down. Six to four months out, I have the little yellow tab. You want to buy the dress. Now, for that, I'm going to intervene and say, again, I took all this straight from the book. Now, my personal tips on this timeline, buy your dress sooner than six to four months out. Um, I just bought my dress, I want to say, going on two weeks. I purchased my dress about two weeks ago, and I have to order it. It's a Maggie Sotero dress, and it comes from Europe, and they have to make it in my size. And that doesn't take, you know, t doesn't even, it doesn't take, like, one or two months to do. It takes, like, four months to do. So, and then once your dress finally does come in, there's still other alterations that need to come because there's no one size dress that's gonna fit every inch of your body. So definitely keep that in mind as far as your timeline goes. I would definitely not wait more than six months out to purchase the dress. Um, that's my personal tip. So um, the rest of the six to four months out, you wanna have your transportation book, like how your bridal party is gonna get from the church to the venue, or if your venue and your um, ceremony are in the same place, then you don't have to worry about transportation. Ceremony music, you want to have your bar your bridesmaids dresses picked out and purchased, um, and do your gift registry if you um, choose to do so. Four to two months out is the next bracket. Um, you want to have your wedding bands ordered if you haven't gotten them already. You want to get your groomsmen's formal wear, so you want to get your um, fiance's tux and everything in order if he's renting or whatever. You want to do that four to two months out. They don't need that long or whatever, especially because most people rent. Um, and the same thing goes for the groomsmen. Um, they want to have their tuxedos and everything like that done four to two months out. All right, you're going to want to send out your final invitations. Once you get your RSVP cards back, you'll be able to do the final count and then you'll send out a final invitation stating, you know, this is who we have um, on our guest list as far as who's gonna show. It'll have three people on the card or two people or four people, whatever the amount of numbers that they RSVP to you. That way you have your final count and then the person is also, you know, reminded, hey, you have a wedding to go to. And reserve any equipment that you might need. I don't know if you need, if your venue doesn't provide you with tables or chairs or, you know, um, the, like, the napkins and stuff like that. Um, make your honeymoon arrangements and book your hair and makeup artist. And you want to do this four to two months out because you want to do a trial run with them. And make sure that if you didn't like that first artist that you picked, you have enough time to find somebody else that will be able to accommodate. And then one month to seven days out, I have nothing written down because it's going to be chaotic. This is going to be the time where you're going to be running around, getting any of the last arrangements done, you know, going through your checklist and you're going to pick up anything that you weren't able to accomplish in the months that it was supposed to be done. You're going to end up doing it then. You're going to have your bridal shower if, you know, you have one. Um... It's crazy. It's going to be crazy. I don't even have it written down because I don't want to look at how nuts it's going to be when I'm Okay, one so month that's the timeline. Life. I don't want to go over every single thing in this video because it's just so much information to take in. But I guess we're going to close it off with going through the budget because I think the budget is also very, very important. And it's one of the first things you do when you're planning a wedding. So again, just to recap, you're gonna set your timeline so that you stay in order throughout all the months of planning. Right after you have your timeline set up, you're gonna want to set up your budget. That is the most important thing, especially if your 
wedding is a wedding on a budget, like mine in particular. I don't have a large budget. Everything that we're putting into this wedding is me and Angel's savings. I was lucky enough to um, have a few donations from my mom and from my mother-in-law. I love you guys, you're lifesavers. If that's the case for you too and you have a tight budget, setting percentages for what you're gonna spend on every item is very important so that you don't end up not having enough to pay oh, for everything. I'm gonna go over some the percentages that I put on everything that for I'm the reception be and rentals. Forty-eight percent of my budget is gonna um, be put in that. Reception includes you know the food, the cake, the alcohol, the lighting, the dance floor, um, tables, chairs, glassware. Everything was covered by my venue except the cake. So I had to leave. Um, out of that 48% that I put set aside for the uh, reception, I had to leave some the ceremony is 2% of my budget. And my ceremony is going to be at my Catholic church um, that I grew up in. And all they require is like a small donation. And, you know, it's pretty much perfect for my budget. So 2% is going to the ceremony. 3% is going to stationary. And that's a very low percentage because... Um, I think the book gives you a different percentage, but I ended up having to drop my percentage to 3% because it just doesn't fit in my budget to have anything more than that. So as far as stationery goes, when I did my save the date cards, I went, you know, super affordable. I printed them out at Sam's Club. You know, they came out really stationary, great quality. Stationery, 3%, and that includes your save the date, your invitations, your place cards, thank you cards if you're going to do them, your stamps for when you send all this stuff out. And then like your guest book, which is the thing that people sign into when they get into your reception, if you want to have something like that. 3%. Next is flowers, and that'll be 8% of your budget. And flowers are very expensive, very, very expensive. So if you're on a budget, you want to do your research as far as what is going to give you the best quality for your book. For the flowers, you have your bridal bouquet, your bridesmaids bouquets, the boutonnieres, the flower girls flowers, the mother's corsage, and all the centerpieces at your venue. So, photography is 6%. So, um, out of that 6%, we took $100 out of that to do our engagement session. So, we got that out of the way. But we still need um, the ceremony pictures, the reception pictures, and then if you want to do any printables or any albums, you'll, you know, work that out with your... Um, okay, next is your wedding attire, and I gave that 16% of my budget because I wanted to make sure I found my dream dress, which I'm pretty sure I did. Um, no, I'm not. I'm sure I did. So wedding attire is 16%, and that includes the gown, the tux, the veil, the shoes, the lingerie, the alterations, the accessories, the makeup, and the hair. That's a lot. That's a lot that goes into that 16%. Entertainment racket. is, I don't even know what percentage I had in here. Entertainment is 5%. But I was really lucky and I got to put that to 0% because my amazing mother-in-law offered to pay for our DJ. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful because you saved us 5% of my budget that I was able to add on to I don't even know where I added it on to. I think I added it on to my wedding attire. So um, entertainment would have been 5%. That was to include your band, your DJ, photo booth, um, any of those types of activities that you want to have at your 3% is gifts. You want to give your bridal party something, you know, to remember you by and a little thank you gift, you know, letting them know you appreciate them being a part of your special day. So, And that also includes wedding favors. Um, Wedding band is 7%. The last but not least is transportation, which I gave it 2% of my budget, which is not a lot of money for transportation, especially because my um, ceremony and my reception are not together. They're not at the same place. They're actually 30 minutes apart. So I'm going to, you know, you have to find um, a mode of transportation for okay, your bridal party. So to recap, we went over um, your timeline and the budget in this video. And those are the first things that you're going to want to do when you start planning your special day. Because you want to stay in order. You want to make sure you're, you know, on the right track. And you want to make sure you're not overspending. Yes, that dress is gorgeous. And you want to spend, you know, 50% of your budget on it. But come on, let's keep it real. Let's, you know, make smart decisions. And have it all jotted down so you know exactly what you Again, just to, to go over some things, the book, The Knot, um, really good book, really helpful if you are interested. I got it at Barnes & Noble. 
Um, another tip I want to give you guys before we leave is actually checking out the website The Knot. Go on thenot.com. It's been such a lifesaver in order to find venues and places to shop for wedding dresses and everything like that. It's an amazing website where you can search your state and your city and it'll help you find, you know, florists, venues, bridal shops, cake shops, everything, everything that you need to know um, with reviews on each shop. So you know that, you know, you're not going into some rinky dink place and you're not wasting your time um, because these guys are ranked by the knot. So it's an extremely helpful website. I like if anything you take from this video, go on the knot.com. Okay, you guys, I think that is it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed my tips on how to get started with your wedding and just make it a lot smoother and easier for you so that you're budgeting yourself correctly and that you stay on time with everything you need to do in preparation for your big day. Stay tuned for my next video. I'm going to do a all about wedding dress shopping video give, give you my tips and tricks on shopping for your dress and i'll even include a few clips of when i went shopping for my dress so stay tuned for that that's going to be my next video in this series i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys got something out of it please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more videos i'll see you in my next one bye